we have accomplished what we started to accomplish, which was to shock the conscience of the United States, especially the northern United States. Declared Cecil B. Moore on the last night of an almost 10-month-long lo picketing campaign. Cecil B. Moore, the leader of the Philadelphia branch of the NAACP, led an ultimately successful campaign to desegregate Girard College and acclaim school. Girard College was a school for fatherless white boys ranging from the ages of 6 to 10. It was situated in the heart of a predominantly black neighborhood, yet it excluded these very children from attending. Moore's demand was simple, integrate Girard College. In December 1965, seven African American children enrolled at Gerard College but were denied acceptance. This sparked a movement. Cecile B. Moore led this campaign with the help of many distinguished activists, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Reverend Leighton Simmers, Bayard Rustin, James Farmer, Roy Wilkins, and Marie Hicks, who was the mother of two um, applicants. The main method of protest used by the campaign was picketing. Picketing is a form of nonviolent protest in which people congregate outside a place of work or a location where an event is taking place. Its primary goal is to draw attention to the cause in a peaceful manner. In May, Cecil B. Lamore led the first picketers there. I remember they had signs that they had made that they were waving around aggressively and they were chanting while they were doing this. And uh, the police had actually been forewarned just to prevent any sort of rioting that could occur. So I first heard about this campaign from my uh, friends um, when they asked if I wanted to support the picketing at Girard College. Of course I agreed, and um, that night I uh, went home, spent the whole night making my sign which read, Stop Segregation at Girard College. It was inspired from uh, a rally that was at my school. Um, frankly, I, di I didn't believe it was right for Girard College to close its gates like that. I mean, look at Temple. Temple's been integrated for nearly 10 years prior to this campaign. Anyway, the next day, I grabbed my freshly painted sign, met up with a few of my friends, and together, we traveled to and protested right outside Gerard College. We protested all day and almost all night. We took turns holding up the banners and signs too. Despite losing my voice and having sore feet from standing, I knew I wasn't going anywhere. The picketing continued with no foreseeable end. It's truly fascinating when you see how much this campaign grew over such a short amount of time. Only 38 demonstrators were there on May 1st, 1965, the campaign's first day. Within only a year and a few months, there were estimated to be thousands of demonstrators at a time. Dr. King himself greeted and spoke to his crowd on August 9th, 1966. He stressed how important it was for them to stay in the ground and continue the nonviolent protests. In the meantime, Cecile B. Moore was doing everything he could to integrate the college. He challenged the court and threatened to continue the picketing until change was made. The threat was fulfilled as Moore resumed the demonstrators on October 8, 1966. This campaign's progress was slowed by several means of opposition. Joseph Duffy was the lawyer that originally brought it to the court's attention that keeping the peace at Gerard College was beginning to cost millions and millions of dollars. Um, the case was directed towards Moore and the city of Philadelphia who was condoning the picketing, and it was decided that the city had to answer within 20 days of the announcement. Moore's campaign faced other opponents as well. The Gerard College Alumni Association, led by Dr. H. Ty Williamson, released a statement saying that it would seek to have the college closed if African Americans were admitted. Later, the Board of Trustees, led by John Diamond, appealed the court's decision, which demanded integration of the college under the Pennsylvania's Public Accommodations Act. After the court's decisions, various opposing groups united to try to prevent the seemingly inevitable integration. We stayed there until we thought the walls would come tumbling down, said Moore, according to the Philadelphia Bulletin. And they did stay until the walls metaphorically crashed to the ground. On May 23, 1968, the Board of Trustees finally decided to admit the seven African-American students, which resulted in the end of the long campaign. Only days after the decision, Cecil B. Moore organized a peace festival at Girard College to celebrate their victory. From that point on, the school continued to admit new African-American students every year. In the end, the campaign not only led to the integration of Gerard College, 
but it also impacted the lives of the thousands of participants and the city of Philadelphia itself.